Welcome to my new series, Fish Food. In each programme, I'll be preparing and cooking a different kind of fish. I'll be talking to fishermen, going fishing, and visiting local restaurants and pubs to see what they do with fish. In today's programme, I'll be cooking Dover sole with shrimp and parsley butter, and lemon sole with shellfish and saffron. And joining me in the kitchen are my three amateur chefs, James, Fiona and Sue. Now James, what do you do for a day job? I'm a hairdresser, Mitch. What, you cook a lot, James? Yeah, I like to think so, yes. And what about seafood? Something you like to oh, cook I love with? fish. Don't really know enough about it, but hoping to improve my skills. So you really enjoy eating it, but you're kind of worried about cooking it? You're right, you're Brilliant. absolutely right. Well, this is going to be great, James. Relax and enjoy it. You're going to have some great fun with this. And what about you, Fiona? I'm a journalist. Writing for newspapers, magazines? Um, all the tabloids and the women's magazines. Brilliant. Anything about food? Um, not at this stage, but perhaps this might inspire me. <laughs> well, you must have a really busy life dashing around everywhere. I mean, mm -hmm. what sort of things do you cook for yourself? Shamefully, baked beans on toast, that's great. about it. We're going to change all that. You're going, to have, you're going to have great fun with this, but you do like eating seafood. I love seafood. Great, mm. well this is going to be brilliant. And Sue, what about you? I'm a housewife. So you must be used to cooking meals for the family and cooking all the time? Yes, I am, but not fish, I'm afraid. Something you're frightened of? It is a little bit, yes. The only fish and chips we have are from the fish shop down the road. Brilliant. Well, I'm going to change all that. I'm going to really show you some lovely dishes. You're all going to have some fun with it. You're going to be really surprised at just how easy it can be. And joining us later in the programme will be Susie Atkins, who's going to give her opinion on matching some drinks to go with our two sole dishes. But first, I'm off to St Moors in Cornwall to join skipper Tony Tomlinson and his one-man crew Tom aboard the Joanna Sea. Are the fishing grounds good off St Moors, Tony? They have been over the years, yes. They've been uh, very good to us. Uh, are, they, are they rich in soles and turbot and that sort of thing? Uh, soles, yes. There's soles here, uh, Dover soles, lemon soles, there's turbot. There's not as much turbot as there was, but there's still turbot to be had. And how many boats are in the fleet in St Moors? There's about eight boats working out of St Moors at present. And they're trawling? Scalloping and trawling, but there's majority of scalloping in the summer. And a few turn over to trawling in the winter, and there's only one or two who fish with a trawl all year round. So how far out have we got to go to uh, catch sole? Uh, it's soles are fairly close inshore. They're from a couple of miles out of the main grounds, but uh, working nets, some of the small boats do quite well catching soles within half a mile of the shore. Is uh, is it a good time of year for soles? <laughs> yeah, their best. Yes, the. Uh, summer months from early June through until Christmas are uh, good months. And do the turbot come in as well? The turbot, uh, the big turbot, tend to stay slightly further off, five, six miles and further than that. But the small, smaller sized turbot do come inshore in the bays. I mean, Dover sole being an expensive fish, obviously they row up at certain times of the year and they're not such good value. What months are they? Uh, they tend to be in the winter months after Christmas. And the soles tend to get much bigger, don't they? In uh, yeah, in, as the season goes on, you catch the bigger, what we call doormats, a uh, big three pound plus fish. Oh, wonderful. As, but the prime size for you, I guess, and for restaurants, is sort of pound size fish, is it? Yes, it is. That's, they're, they're the ones in demand, they fetch the highest price. What are these guys fishing for here? Mackerel. They're mackerel fishing, are Yes. They? So, while we're trawling for soles today, what other species can we hope to catch? Uh, you catch lemon sole, uh, gurnets, whiting. Squid, a general mix of fish, a few cod perhaps. And is it always um, always catch out here, or some days there's just not a lot of fish around? Well, some days there isn't a lot of fish around. In the, the summer is a quiet month, well, they're quiet months for trawling generally. They're good for the odd species such as salt, but they're quiet otherwise. After a few hours of trawling, the nets were ready to pull in. This is where the hard work starts. These guys are out here in all weathers and all states of tide. And this is where the fish is graded and sorted, ready for landing. Oh, look at those. That's a nice bag full, Tony. Yeah, there's mixed, mixed stuff. There's a nice dover there. There is a nice dover there. There's a nice bit of cod. Well, the sun's out now, but for most of this trip, we've had raining weather. But the guys in this boat can't choose the weather they, they fish in. Neither can they choose what goes into the net. But this is a fantastic haul for just four hours fishing. I mean, first thing up was this conger eel. Not a huge one, but great for eating in suits. We've got some lovely blue whiting. Don't see them very much. In fact, you don't see them in the shops because they don't have an awful lot of commercial value. And look at these cod. 
Two little codlings. Stunning, look at the colours. Absolutely beautiful. And this is it, look. A hake. Good sized fish, nice and fat. That is lovely. Gurnard, this is a great on. catch. Look at that Gurnard. The colours on him. That's a lovely, lovely fish. Whoa, look, a monkfish. When we see monkfish in the shops, we normally just see the tail because that's all we eat. But this is the monkfish with his head, and they call him the anglerfish as well. Because when he feeds on the bottom, he has this little fishing rod almost above his mouth, which is where he catches his food. But that is spectacular. So this is where the guys will be sorting all the species now of everything they've got. We've got some whiting here. And amongst all this, this is what I'm looking for, Dover soles. Look at that prime size fish. That's stunning. OK, so these are our Dover soles. Now, the best size you can get for eating is about 16 ounces. That's about a pound. That'll give you a really good, a good meal. Now, these are lovely and fat, and things to look for when you're buying a Dover sole is just make sure the flesh is nice and firm. Have a look under the gills, make sure that they're a nice bright red colour. I mean, they're quite expensive, so you just want to, you know, this is a really important part of the process, is selecting a good fish. Mm. Now, once you've got it, you've got to take the skin off. I mean, lemon soles and megrim soles, they have a much thinner skin, so you can eat it. But I always find with Dover sole, it's just a little bit tough, really, so right. you want to get rid of that. It's quite an easy process. Ask your fishmonger, he'll do it for you. Yeah. But this right. is the way you do it at home. First of all, you just need to make sure your board is nice and secure mm -hmm. on the table. <laughs> and what I've done is I've put a damp cloth under it, so now it's not going to shift anywhere, and you just need a little bit of strength. So, sharp little knife, just to make a nick, just an incision, just at the tail. Okay. Just big enough, so I can get my thumb under. Now, I want you to do yours as well, because I think the best way you can actually learn is to get stuck in. So just make that little cut across the bottom of the tail, and just see if you can hoik your thumb. Up. Use that knife, knife, yeah, use mm. that knife, James. No special knives for this, just enough, that's it, it's perfect. I mean, if you need to, James, just go underneath it with a knife there, underneath the skin. You just okay. want a flap big enough to be able to get your thumb under. All right, you're taking a fillet in it, James. You only want, only want the skin off. <laughs> okay. He's getting carried away. He is, yeah. We just want that under there like that, so you can get your, get your thumb okay. under, okay? okay so the next thing is, now, another, a little tip here is you've got to grab hold of this. So if you find it a bit slippery and slimy, and, okay. you know, a good Dover sole is always going to be covered with that slime, mm. just put a bit of salt on your fingers, just ordinary table salt. Right. It'll act as a little bit of a grip for right. it. Right. But this right. is, this is the easy part. So hold on to your, 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 your skin, under with the thumb, and just run your thumb all the way along, so you start to expose the... Look at that fish oh, underneath wow. it, OK? It's easy, Lovely, James. Right? Yeah, you yeah. get your thin under, um, thumb under there, it's like nice that. and easy. Yeah, that's it, all the way to the head, all right? Now, it's with a cloth... It's tougher than you think, isn't it? <laughs> it is tougher, but it's, you know, it's not a hard job, OK? okay. So then what we do is just take a cloth, all your hands, mm. and this is where you just wrestle a little bit. This is where it flies off? This is where you just wrestle a little oh, bit that's here. Oh, this is sort of... Yeah. That's it, and you just pull. Mm -hmm. Just get it there, and that will come off like a glove, nice and easy. And I'm not tugging hard, I'm, yeah. just, I'm just keeping my hand yeah. along the sole, and look at that. I oh, mean, wow. yeah, perfect, really lovely yeah. thick meat. And then you turn it over and do it again. So let's get the top side done first. OK, get your cloth ready. You got a cloth, James? Yes. Always have a cloth handy. Mm -hmm. I'm ready to go. Mm, hold brilliant. this end with the cloth? Yeah, hold the, end, hold the fish with the cloth, and then just rip it off, James. You just mm. tug it. it goes. Just give it a pull. Nice. better on the other hand, actually. Whichever handed you are, James, strong hand to pull it. That's it, just, just pull. All the way back. Ooh. That's it. There you go, James. As soon as it starts, that's it. Easy. Absolutely easy. Look, Sue's got it off as well. Oh, it's going great. And it's exactly the same thing on the okay. other side. So that's our soles ready to go. So we'll cut them dark side up, because I think that's the fattest part of the sole. Now what mm. we're going to do is we're going to fry it in a little bit of olive oil, um, a little bit of butter, and then we're going to make a, a butter um, sauce. We're, we're going to melt the butter, we're going to take it on a stage so the butter actually goes what they call noisette. It's just a nutty brown, it gets a lovely flavour to it. Okay. We're going to have some sweet brown shrimps, some chopped parsley, good load of lemon juice at the end just to freshen it up and we'll just spoon that over our sole. Sounds great. Right. Do you use salted butter? Or no, no, always unsalted butter. The reason for unsalted butter is that you can always add salt but you can't take salt no, out. Right. So we're ready to go. But James, first of all, I mean it's always best when you're cooking, especially with fish, which is nice and quick, Make sure everything is prepared before you go. It's much, much easier than trying to chop an onion and throw it in the pan, have a glass of wine, everything else, it all kind of burns at the same time. So just get everything ready. So James, I need some parsley, please. Um, we'll put our sole over there to one side. And I'll put that with your rubbish there, James. And uh, a quick wipe down on the board. Now I like to use flat leaf parsley. Um, I just twist the stalks off, okay? Mm -hmm. I, do, I do like to use it, I think it's... Uh, 
and a good sharp knife. Screw it up into a ball in your hand and then just let the knife do the work. Let's just chop it. We don't want it too fine. I like my food rustic mm. and, yeah, yeah. Yeah. you know, ready to go. But you can smell that parsley just kind of releasing that lovely, lovely fresh. Okay, guys, prep's done. We've got our parsley, we've got our brown shrimps that already came into me peeled, but you can buy them unpeeled. It makes no difference. I quite like the crunch of the shell as well. They? Yeah. They're delicious. Yeah. These are sort of yeah. more compay brown shrimps, but they're really nice flavour. So we've got the parsley, mm -hmm. we'll have the butter, and if you just like, make sure it's all next to you on the stove. I'll bring over the lemons as well, and of course we want one of those magnificent fish. So we're all ready to go. So the first thing is, can everybody see all right? Yeah. Okay, yeah. lovely. The first thing is you need a nice hot pan. That's a secret of it all. If you use too cold a pan, things tend to fuse to the pan and stick, and you fiddle around with it, and it's a bit of a mess. Okay. So I've got my oil. That's going to go in first. Okay, so that oil's nice and smoky. Make sure it coats vegetable the bottom oil? of the pan. That's vegetable, vegetable oil and olive oil mixed together. Mm -hmm. right. um, so then what you do is you lay the sole always away from you. If you drop it into water, you're going to get covered yeah. in right. when, you're, when you're ready to go. So that's the sole there. And at this point, you can just relax. I mean, what mm -hmm. this, what this is ha what's happening now is that we're trying to get a nice golden colour to the fish so it comes out looking nice and appetising. Yeah. And then as soon as that's done, we're going to pop it in the oven on a maximum heat and we're going to finish it off for about seven or eight minutes. OK, so what I've done is I've melted the butter, I've added some salt to it right at the very beginning and I've got it nice and frothy and foamy and I just took it onto what they call the noisette stage. If you can see, that's lovely deep oh, yeah. brown colour, it smells yeah. very nutty. Mm. And all we're going to do to finish it off, because these shrimps don't take any cooking, is just a handful mm. of shrimps in the butter there. We'll freshen it up with some, you know, good handful of uh, parsley in there, mix all that into it. That's and then last of all, mm. just some good lemon juice, which will sharpen the whole thing up. Yeah. And then that just goes straight over the top of our sole. You can just what a oh, difference that butter lovely. makes. Yes. It's, uh, you know. That's lovely. Mm. And what would you serve that with, Mitch? Oh, a bowl of nothing more than a just Jersey Royals, minted potatoes maybe a green salad. I mean, you know, mm -hmm. it's a classic dish. Sole doesn't need anything to it. And Dover sole mm -hmm. is, you know, it's an absolute favourite of mine. It brings out the best in it. I really like it. Great. I'm beginning to feel hungry. Yeah, <laughs> <great>. <laughs> Can we eat it? <laughs> While we enjoy our fish, join me again after the break when I'll be visiting the Pandora Inn to find out what they do with sole. And of course, there'll be more cooking. Just along the coast from St Moore's is the beautiful Falestry, where you will find the 13th century Pandora Inn, which is well known for its quality of fish dishes, and it's where I'm headed to meet John Milan the owner for lunch. John, this is the perfect location to come and eat Dover Sole. How has the chef prepared it for us? It's just a, a lovely fresh um, Dover sole, we know called the king of fish, just stuffed with fresh scallops and lobster and just simply grilled. Local scallops, I take it? Everything within the estuary. Tell me about some of the dishes that you have on the menu, John. Well, we, we would have six or eight fresh fish on, on the menu every day, which could be lemon sole, sea bass, uh, place, steamed lobster. And how do you cook them? They could be poached, they could be oven baked, they could be grilled. What with, sort of flavours do, do you add to your fish? Um, with, with capers or white wine. Um, just very simple flavours, really, that, that wouldn't mask the original taste of the fish. So you're letting the fish speak for itself? Oh, yeah, yeah, always, always, yeah. Oh, just I mean, as an accompaniment rather than a sort of a masking flavour. And what sort of people come and eat here? Is it a vast amount of local trade? Obviously in the summertime, lots and lots of visitors, but uh, the Pandora has a very loyal following because of where it is and people can often sit outside here in November and, and um, enjoy nice food. So, you know, the location I suppose is half of it. So plenty of Sundays just lazing down by the river and oh, yes, eating yeah. fish. Yeah, brilliant, yeah. That was an interesting way that the Pandora Inn cooked their sole, but I'm going to change it a little bit. I'm going to use mussels uh, instead of scallops and I'm not going to use lobster. I'm just going to use the mussels and some fresh sweet prawns as well. And I'm going to add some fennel to it. So we've got kind of a shellfishy, mm -hmm. saffrony yeah. sauce. Yeah. This is our lemon sole. Uh, it's quite different from the Dover sole, as you can see. I mean, first of all, the colour. I mean, it's yellow, mm. hence it gets mm. its name. Um, the lemon sole. Again, like the Dover sole, when you're looking for it, you can see that lovely slime over the top of it. You know, is that which is fresh? Which makes, makes, indicates it's really nice and fresh. Yeah. And give it a, you know, touch it. I mean, it's got a real kind of feel to it. And I mean, you know, when you go choosing oh, yeah. these things, nice and firm, pick it up, you know, it smells 
of nothing but the sea. There's no strong fish So you fish know that's when it's that. fresh. That's really yeah. fresh. The yeah. most, impo most important part of your fish cookery is buying good fish. Now yeah. all we're going to do is grill this okay. um, and it needs nothing more. So I've got a bit of olive oil going on there. Um, I'm going to put some salt in that olive oil. You don't have crunchy to skin sea salt. Don't have to skin it because the skin is much thinner right. on the lemon right. sole yeah. than the Dover sole. So look, I'll just rub one side in then I'll rub the other side in. And make sure that olive oil is rubbed well into the mm -hmm. skin. That can then just go straight under the grill. How long do you grill it for, Mitch? That's just going to want two or three minutes just to get the skin yeah. nice and crisp. But make sure your grill's hot first. You want it really preheated to get a nice bubbly skin. Right. And then just finish it in the bottom part of the oven. My, my oven here's got a grill at the top and an oven at the bottom. Right. So he, he you don't have like, to turn it over then when you're No, you're getting all that all round heat to it. So you know, you're just crisping the top all round heat. Easy so let's start okay. off the sauce. Um, what I've got here is I've got some um, butter. Mm -hmm. I'm then going to add some what I call pasted garlic, which is garlic that I've taken really fine, because the finer you take garlic, the more garlic flavour you're going to mm. get. If you roughly chop it, you're not yeah. going to get a huge amount of mm -hmm. garlic flavour, so I want this really quite rich. So I'm going to melt that. Is that um, salted butter, Mitch? Always right? unsalted butter, James, oh, always. Right. always. Always. And that's really good. But what I'd like first, James, is you can do this for me. I'd like yeah. some garlic pasted. Now, the easy way to do this, instead of using a garlic press, I think it's a much better way of doing it, is give it one hit, one whack, one mm -hmm. whack with a knife. <laughs> Uh, which has broken it up into little pieces. Well, that sometimes happens. So Why is that better than the uh, garlic press? I think garlic presses are an absolute pain to clean, to be honest. Oh, yeah, and, okay. uh, <laughs> and, uh, and there we go. I just watch my butter, because I only want that butter to melt gently. Right. Now, you just take a knife, James, yeah. and you just keep working your knife. Careful you don't flick oh, it yeah. off, shooting it across. You see how I'm working yeah. that to a, a nice, fine paste, and the salt that I've put into it is acting as an abrasive with it. Right. So you can take that down really, really nice and fine. Uh -huh. So that's where the garlic good. Okay, so that's great. It always leaves like a rough skin in it. It does, it? yeah. Well, that's, you know, look, that's all pasted up, ready okay. to go. Just going to add that to my butter. What I want to do is to just gently get that butter that's in there yeah. flavoured with that garlic so mm -hmm. it's nice and nice and, you know, no, yeah, yeah, it's brown great. It really. Oh no, never yeah. brown the garlic, James. If you if you brown garlic and brown onions, onions, it takes on a different flavour. Right. In with right. wine, just a splash of good dry wine. Mm -hmm. Just right. boil it for um, just thirty seconds or so. Just take off some of that alcohol, and then we're going to add some fresh mussels into it. Now the mussels are full of seawater, and they're going to release their juices, which will sort of form the base of our sauce really so it's nice and fresh. So How they, long will they take to cook? They just want covering and yeah. they will then just stay in there for two to three minutes and that's oh, it. Yeah. It's quick isn't it? Yeah. Very quick indeed. Okay the sole's just ready I'm going to take the mussels off a minute. Look at that. Oh wow. See it's all wow. crystal out of that olive oil that salt isn't it great mm. and a lovely smell when it just comes out the oven so yeah. we can slide that off. So that was started on the grill and then started finished on the, the grill, yeah. get it nice and crisp. Then again, it just went into the bottom of the oven, just the all round heat just again, set. setting the How flesh. How long was it in the oven, mate? Uh, that was about seven minutes seven in the oven, minutes. just right. to set the flesh. So now look at this the smell of this. It's like the beach, isn't it? Oh, wow. and it's just fresh Georgia. mussels, all the juice in that's there fantastic. is just, oh, that's lovely. just muscle juice and garlic. So I'm going to take some of these shells away. Right. And uh, we don't want wow. too many shells on it, but look how fat the mussels yeah, are as well. Lovely. And uh, you know, the, that's what the base of the sauce is going to be made from, which is really how I like things. So there it is. Okay. Now I'm going to add a good pinch of good quality saffron. Mm -hmm. I really love the flavour of saffron. Mm. I think it works really well. Yeah. And I'll just give that a stir. You can already see the colour's lovely. Yeah, that's yeah, changing yeah. into that yeah. lovely Golden rich colour. Mm -hmm. And I've got some uh, fennel there, chopped fennel. And I call it fennel herb, but it's really the tops of the fennel bulbs. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. if you notice, I'm just stirring it in the last minute. I want it to stay crunchy. I really want that sort of aniseed flavour in it as well. And last of all, we've got these fresh prawns. Mm -hmm. Now, aniseed herbs are interesting with fish because I think tarragon, um, fennel, dasherpurno in a sauce really does make a difference. It just seems to have an affinity somewhere right, along the line. Yes. Oh. And that's all ready to go. You don't want those prawns in there for too long. They're already oh, cooked. They're just going to have a nice sweetness. And then this can just be spooned just over. Can you use anything else if you haven't got any fennel or...? Um, Any other that tarragon would, would work really well, um, mm. as would if you wanted to, a few cockles in here as well would be nice, but look at those yeah. mussels. Yeah. But what you've got there is just a very basic shellfish yeah, sauce. But it looks so pretty on the plate, doesn't it? it does. Well, you're, just, you're just using all the natural colours. Yeah. I mean, you've got yeah. reds in there, you've got blacks, so you've got the lemon sole, you've got that lovely yellow of the saffron. Mm. And I think it's what this fish cooker is all about. Mm. You know, it's something so easy, just letting the ingredients speak for itself. And everything on that plate is just going to taste like it should taste. Wow. <laughs> fresh mussels, fresh sole. And then there was no lemon juice in that? I've not used any lemon juice at all. I've yeah. just let the mussels, you know, take on that full flavour. Yeah. Normally I do, just if it's a simply grilled sole, I think sea salt, lemon juice lemon is a very juice, good yeah. thing. But that but, yeah. is a dish on its own, nice and quick, nice and that simple. So it's very gorgeous. Nice. Yes. It does look yes. nice.
Dover sole is one of the most magnificent fish in the sea, and lemon sole classy. is much more of a delicate flavour. I mean, what are we going to drink with those? Well, really classy dishes, and so I haven't messed around with this one at all. I've gone straight for two very classic wines, um, traditional, great matches, very fine wines indeed. Um, we're going for something, obviously, that's got to have good crisp acidity with these quite delicate dishes, again, acting like the citrus fruit on it. But I've gone for things that really, you know, they're worth splashing out on. So the first one here is a Chablis. It's from Marks and Spencer's, this particular one. Everybody Chab knows Chablis. Yeah. Everyone knows first Chablis. Yeah. But not everybody knows issue. that Chablis is Chardonnay. I think people no. think Chablis is a different thing. Chablis is Chardonnay yeah. made in the Chablis region of um, Burgundy. Yeah. It's particularly light. It's often got a sort of flinty mineral quality. I think it's an absolute classic. And if I was splashing out on soul, and I was going to have a still dry white wine, I think I'd go for Chablis every time. And just, just mm. get that lovely balance on yes. it. You get the buttery richness, which goes so well with the kind of butter sauces, that That's sort of delicious. thing. But there's that lovely freshness mm. to it as well. Mm. Chablis is one of the best balanced wines nice you can wine, buy. That is. That is you delicious. Like that, yeah. I can see no, you, you might, you might pay seven or eight pounds for it, but you know, I don't think that's ridiculous. When you're making a very special meal, I think that's, you know, you should be prepared to, to pay a bit more for a very good wine. But everybody associates quality with Chablis, don't they? I mean, it's a third, yes, you know, people yes. tend to sit down and look at Sancerre, Chablis. I mean, you know, it's a first choice most mm. of the time, I think. So. Lovely, well lovely it too, buttery as well. finish. Is, I mean, yes. although it's a relatively light one, it just goes on and on on the yeah. palate. For the Dover Sole, I've gone for champagne, an absolute classic <laughs> oh. again. I haven't picked a very expensive champagne, though. I mean, you could if you had the money. Mm. I've gone for Safeway's own label champagne, which I think is always a good buy, Albert Etienne. Um, and again, I just think that it's worth spending something, you know, spend, splashing out on something that's a bit more splendid if you're going to have such a classic, Great good, fish. majestic good fish. fish. Mm. So um, this costs about £12, and I think that's reasonable for a good champagne. I know I'm going to like this. <laughs> you know you're going to like this. Very, very fresh. Don't think of champagne as just an aperitif wine. Champagne yes. goes very, very well with fish and fish sauces. Um, you could match it with shellfish very effectively as well. Mm. So, I mean, it works quite well if you have the Chef champagne thing. as an aperitif to start with and then take it through to the dining room and mm. carry on with it. If you're serving well, a champagne <laughs> sauce, then all the better. What can you say, James? Mm -hmm. you, you like that, James? <laughs> this, is, this is a kind of treat, isn't it? A glass of champagne, a Dover mm. sole dish. I mean, what, what can be better, more romantic than that? Special, that's quite a light one as well. Special occasion really wines and, and food. No, that's delicious. And that's quite a light one as well, because mm, sometimes yeah. it, you know, it can get quite mm. sort of heavy and... I think very powerful, very rich champagnes, and they do tend to be the more costly ones as well, aren't so good. I think these, these lighter, very crisp ones, they, they, they have a more mm. kind of gentle combination with the food. Um, and I think champagne goes very well with fish. Mm.